get ready. Norwalk Havoc Robot League is a combat robotics league in Norwalk, Connecticut that has been fighting robots since 2018. Every couple of months, builders everywhere come to compete for the coveted Golden Dumpster and a prize of $1,000 in cash. It's time to fight robots at Norwalk Havoc Robot League. Hello and welcome to the NHRL Recap. Today, we're starting coverage of our three-pound weight class. You'll see an extra bot in our arena. That's our house bot. We have two three-pound arenas, so this is either going to be Brett the Brick or Bert the Brick. Their job is to free bots that have been stuck, separate bots that have been joined, and give us a bot's eye view of the action. Okay, you might be thinking, three pounds? That's tiny! These bots must be so weak. See that last oh! It turns out that the three pound weight class is by far Norwalk's most competitive. Previously in the series, we have five 30 pound bots, 16 12 pound full combat bots, and four 12 pound sportsman bots. In the next two episodes, we're gonna cover a tournament of 85 three pound bots, many of them built and driven by veterans of the sport. How can we squeeze a tournament of 85 bots into two episodes? Well, we can't. So we're going to start very deep in the bracket. So first off, we're skipping about 85% of the bots that were entered, and so we're going to miss some amazing matches. Apologies to all the excellent bots we won't be able to cover. We hope to get you soon. Now then, almost all of these bots have 2021 rankings. We have our number one ranked bot, Polywog, here, built and driven by David Jin. We just saw him drive Hot Leaf Juice to victory in the last episode. We also have the brutally hard-hitting Voxel, the relentless Shredded Bro, and the brilliant Silent X. Now, keep in mind that we've had 105 three-pound bots fight at NHRL so far this year, so all these bots are in the upper half of our rankings. The one unranked bot so far in 2021 is Billy, who is in his first NHRL fight of the year. But Billy is no stranger to Norwalk, having racked up a 7-2 record in the 2020 season and winning the Golden Dumpster in our September 2020 event. And we already saw Billy's bigger brother, Bobby, take second place in the 12-pound full combat tournament. Billy's definitely a bot to watch. We're going to start with a few fights from earlier in the tournament. Then we're going to pick up the bracket fairly late in the tournament, and we'll follow that bracket to its conclusion next week. Here we go. Get ready. Winner's bracket, Polywog versus Voxel. Our first fight is definitely going to start us off with a bang. A fight between our first and third ranked bots. Polywog is our number one ranked bot in 2021. It's from builder David Jin, who captains Ribot on BattleBots, and who drives Lucy Dew's 12-pound bot Hot Leaf Juice. David has a habit of winning a lot of fights at NHRL. His old drum spinner Wasp is ranked third all-time at Norwalk with a career record of 31 and 13, with three second-place tournament finishes in 2019. Polywog made its debut in November 2020 and won a Golden Dumpster in our March 2021 tournament. Now, Polywog has already fought twice today, beating Wild Strawberry by knockout in 72 seconds and winning a decision against DBSC3. Its opponent is the terrifying beater bar Voxel, ranked third this year from builder Michael Shore of Plum, Pennsylvania. It's already fought one match today, disassembling Sugar Rush by knockout in a relatively leisurely 1 minute 51 seconds. Why leisurely? Voxel boasts an all-time NHRL average fight time of 1 minute 23 seconds. That's second lowest among bots with at least 10 matches. Only Redhawk is faster. Of Voxel's 20 career NHRL fights, only 5 have gone to the judges. Don't go to the kitchen to get food. This might be a quick match. Classic Three, Norwalk Havoc two, action right here. One. Fight. Robots fight. Two of the most successful bots to ever enter this competition. Both of them made it all the way to the finals last time around. Polywog was able to pull out the win. Now, if you're sitting in the audience and you like Voxel's performance, go out right after this fight and buy a t-shirt from the merch table. Oh, there's a reason there's merch. Whoa, did that look like that was a chunk of metal. Was that off of the drum of Voxel? It yeah. is! What? through that drum wow. wow okay well that's, wow that's not supposed to look like that folks Kyle, that, that'll just buff right out right yeah you know you can you just kind of gorilla glue that together i was gonna say we'll get some gorilla glue back out here maybe some sticky tack we'll put that back together for yeah him. wow 
So Polywog wins that fight. Uh, yeah, I'd say. Voxel's gonna need a new drum. Like many combat robots, Voxel uses a very hard form of shock-resistant tool steel for its weapon, S7. The good news about S7 is it's difficult to bend or blunt. The bad news is that when it fails, it doesn't give like other alloys. It does that. Literally a tough break for Voxel, Polywog fights on in the winner's bracket. So Voxel heads to the loser's bracket. Their first match over there is pretty decisive, knocking out instant regret in 19 seconds. But Voxel will be upset in its next match, losing to Underbite in 37 seconds. They are out of this tournament in a shocking early exit. Get ready. Loser's Bracket. Red Hawk versus Nitro Hornet. Two more Norwalk veterans face off in an elimination match. Red Hawk from builder Joshua Bellinger began its Norwalk career in February as a kit build, but it's now got a custom chassis to match its internals. It's one of the best knockout artists in the competition with an average fight time of 79.8 seconds. That's fastest of all bots with a winning record. Of its 13 fights in previous NHRL events, it's only gone to the judges twice. Red Hawk started its tournament well with a 29 second knockout of Captain Generic and then a decision over the Hardy Bison. But it lost a decision to Wicked Wedge, putting it here in the loser's bracket. Nitro Hornet from Dylan McCarthy is a legendary NHRL bot. This is its 10th NHRL event. It's been competing since the first ever Norwalk in December 2018. While it's ranked 48th in 2021, it's ranked 38th all time among the 199 three pound bots that have fought here. It's always great to see Nitro Hornet compete. Now, this is a loser's bracket match, which means the winner gets to keep fighting and the loser has to pack their bags. Red Hawk versus Nitro Hornet. Two, one, fight robots, fight! Oh! Red Hawk seemed to get the better of that exchange. But as we haven't like seen the weapon from Nitro Hornet, and Nitro Hornet just lost a wow. wheel. Or at least most of a wheel on that left side of its drive. Yeah, that, that wheel on the left side of Nitro Hornet is no longer a circle, Kyle. No, it's kind of this odd half circle chewed up shape. I don't know if there's a name for the shape that uh, <laughs> that wheel is in now. Wow, it is bumping all around the floor. Nitro Hornets. Doesn't seem Look like at there's all that foam. Yeah, both wheels are pretty chonked up now. There's not really enough ground clearance for that weapon to spin. Wow. Red and Hawk. Red Hawk, just... you can hear it. It is humming in that box. Yeah, just disassembling them. It looks like we're going to need to see some motion here. Oh, thanks for the help there, Brett. <laughs> uh, and that's a tap out. Good job, Brett. Doing, Brett's doing helping. Your work. Yeah, Let's there give you a go. round of applause for Brett. He's such a helpful guy. <laughs> that was a pretty typical fight from Red Hawk. They were able to get to Nitro Hornet's wheels, and they got the knockout in under a minute. That means Red Hawk continues to fight, but we have to say goodbye to Nitro Hornet. We can't wait to see them fight again soon. Get ready. Winner's bracket. Dread Hades versus Shreddit Bro. Now we get one of the most enticing matches of the competition, with two BattleBots competitors facing each other. Last episode, we got the unexpected treat of Perfect Phoenix Captain Tyler Wynn driving a Hammerbot. But Dread Hades is his beater bar bot that he has built with the help of some guy named Ray Billings, who has a bot in BattleBots called Tombstone that, you know, shows some potential. Tyler and Ray debuted Dread Hades at Norwalk back in May and went 5 and 2 with 3 knockouts. They are every bit as potent as you would imagine they'd be. Ray wasn't able to make it to this competition, but he cheered Tyler on in the live chat. And they've been having an excellent day so far, knocking out Bapo in 12 seconds, tied for the 8th fastest in NHRL history among 3 pound bots. They went on to take decisions over Ratfish and ZZ Bot. But they've drawn one of the toughest opponents of the competition. Shreddit Bro, driven by Pain Train Captain Evan Arias, has three golden dumpsters under his belt and is looking for his fourth. Evan's known for a hyper-aggressive driving style, starting with a lightning-fast box rush and suffocating their opponent from there. Shredded is not known for having a long-lasting weapon, but the way Evan drives it, it doesn't always matter. He's constantly ramming and engaging his opponent, and Shredded's drive system seems immortal. Shredded has only been knocked out once in 22 fights this year. Shredded Bro has fought twice today, winning a decision against Sepio and another against Tiefschlag in a match so fun it got a 30-second encore. We're in the winner's bracket, so one of these amazing bots is headed to the loser's bracket. Which one will it be? Oh, Shredded wow. Bro! 
Dread Hades. This is a big one. This is going to go. be ridiculous. Let's go. I can't wait to see this. All right, let's get fired up. Here we go. Oh, oh my goodness. Shredded Pro taking it right to Dread Hades, popping them up into the air two times. Two times. Both of these bots trying to get their weapons working after that, but Shredded Pro's belts oh. are all over the weapon. They are not supposed to be there. They're supposed to be connecting the weapon oh, to wow. the motor. Not sure what's going on with Dread Hades' weapon. They might not be able to spin it up with a Shredded Pro right in their face. So that pin is happening right there. Looks like the belt is still attached on, on uh, Dread Hades. But I can't see it spinning up. No, nope. looks like we're down to a push match. <laughs> wow, locked horns. It's like two bucks fighting over my apple trees. Yeah, you got those larger Banebot wheels. Oh, that. Is anyone still able to spin up? Doesn't look like it. No, well, Prom Heat is trying. Or sorry, not Prom Heat, Dread Hades is trying. They're not really able to get much power behind it. I wonder what's going on with that. Yeah, Shred, it's doing a good job of locking it up, if that's the case. Yeah, like two poles. Shred, a little larger wheel diameter, a little harder pushing power. They're able to take uh, get the upper hand kind of in these pushing matches, but that might not last the entire match. There's still a long way to go. We're not even halfway through this fight. Two poles pushing back and forth, just wrestling. Got <laughs> somebody in the chat just said it's push it, bro. I like that. Whoa, that's a weapon. That is a weapon that is fully working. All on right. Dread Hades, this match completely just changed in dynamics. Oh. oh. Now, normally, I would say that there is a very, very good chance for Shredded Bro in this match, but normally, Shredded Bro is not going up against as talented of a driver as Tyler Wynn. This is going to be a hard one to come back from. Yeah, this is going to be a good last minute. And that weapon coming back to life changes everything. Tyler was holding his own in those pushing matches, but it is not a pushing match anymore. It is Tyler Wynn with an active weapon, and that is always scary. Oh! oh another big hit. That was beautiful. Uh, beautiful hits there from Tyler Wynn and Dread Hades. Shredded Pro as aggressive as ever, but to no avail with this very, very powerful weapon of Dread Hades just knocking them back and forth every single time. Shredded is still just, it's not afraid to just keep ramming away at that full speed weapon. No, the best they can do right now is break the weapon on Dread Hades before we go to the judges, we but we are seconds. almost there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Whoa. 3, oh. 2, one, and that's the end of this wow. fight. Power down your weapons, head to the door. Round of applause, that's two of the best drivers you will ever see in this sport. Don't call it a comeback. Wow, all right. Our judges today are Jack from the BattleBots Vanquish and Ragnarok, Don from the BattleBot Huge, and Andrew from the BattleBot Deep Six. It's got to go to Dread Hades. That weapon coming back to life just gave them complete control over the fight, and Trevor didn't really have much of a chance after that. There were three keys to this match. First, Shreddit losing its weapon in the opening seconds. Second, Dread Hades getting its weapon back in the final minute. Now, those two factors don't necessarily mean a Shreddit loss. You saw how many times Shreddit tried ramming Dread Hades in the final minute. But Tyler Wen showed why he's such an elite driver. Every time Shreddit tried to attack Dread Hades, it always got a perfectly aimed beater bar. That's not as easy as it looks. We just saw a master class. Now in the loser's bracket, Shreddit will win a decision against promising newcomer Adrift, but will lose a decision to the fearsome Silk. This eliminates them from the tournament. Unfortunately, their weapon had issues all day. I'm sure they'll be back next tournament with a more reliable beater bar. Dread Hades, meanwhile, continues in the winner's bracket. But Evan is sticking around, and he has Pain Train here? What's going on? Maybe Evan can explain? Evan Arias, Captain of Shredded Bro. Hi, Evan. Captain of Shredded X, Captain of Pain Train. What is going on? Why is Pain Train here today? So Pain Train has a new home. It's going to be here at Norwalk, which is basically home for us. Yep. And also, uh, we picked up a nice sponsor. You guys will find out a lot of details soon. But for, I guess you could say season six, expect Pain Train version two. What? Kyle! 
So there you have it. The old pain train is going to hang out at Norwalk, and the new pain train is in for BattleBot Season 6. If he can get that bot as mobile and dependable as Shredded Bro, he can go very far in Las Vegas. But back to Norwalk. Let's see where we are now in the bracket. We're going to run through a few big fights. Jack Rabbit will send Dread Hades to the loser's bracket via decision. Billy will knock out Poliwog in 2 minutes and 50 seconds, sending it to the loser's bracket. Silent X will win by forfeit against Gemso. That sets up a fight between Jack Rabbit and Billy, and we'll see more of Silent X and Gemso later this episode. But for now, let's look at this fourth match here. Get ready. Winner's Bracket, Saw Mirai versus Blackbird. A big matchup here between two powerful bots. Samurai is from builder Ryan Beaver. It's been fighting at Norwalk ever since March 2019. For some reason, July is Samurai's month. Last July, it went 4-2 and, and made it to the 6th round of the loser's bracket. And it's enjoying a deep run today, going 4-0 so far, with a decision against Kyanite, knockouts against Green Eggs and Wham, and a drift, and a decision against Project Liftoff. Blackbird is from Anthony D'Ambrosio of Team Shredit. It's a very powerful bot with a 16-10 career record. Anthony shares the fierce driving style that Team Shredit is known for, and his attempts to block Brett or Bart from unsticking his opponent mean that the announcers now call that move a D'Ambrosio. Blackbird has had an excellent day so far, with knockouts against Wormhole, Frogmint, and Head of Lettuce, none of which took longer than 1 minute and 42 seconds. One of these bots must drop to the loser's bracket. Which one will it be? This is going to be Blackbird versus Seven, Samurai. Six, Winners five, bracket round five, four, two undefeated three, robots and two, two very different one, styles of driving. Right, yeah, very fight. different strategies for these bots. Anthony the Ambrosio and Blackbird the, uh, will, will show absolute aggression in this match, popping the minibot in the air of Samurai. With that, oh, and there's a wheel! That's going to make things very, very challenging for Samurai. Samurai relies on its ability to drive and control other bots in order to land those big hits. Getting those big is hits. picking his moment here. Yeah. There's a weapon belt. I do believe that is from Samurai. Are you sure about that? Yeah. It's starting to, uh, to sound very quiet in the box. Are you sure that's not Anthony's belt? No, I think belt. you might be right. That is Anthony's belt. Anthony down a belt and uh, facing a one-wheeled Samurai. That minibot is nowhere to be seen. I think it's been knocked out of commission, and Samurai is now crab walking toward its opponent. Anthony's a good driver. He's not going to allow himself to be pinned, but he would like to earn a knockout with this fully functional drive. So he seems to be waiting for an opportunity here, but what he needs to do in this last one minute and 40 seconds of this match is show the judges he can still be aggressive and in control of this control bot. Oh, and this is a pin! Oh no! Samurai's coming in! Not what oh, Anthony and he was hoping for. Away that that is a huge piece of plastic uh, on the front of Blackbird. Yeah, that was a really big hit. Gotta be careful for that. Definitely want to start those pins away from the wall. Try to maintain control of Samurai and all the way into a corner or into the wall. Anthony is now circling the box to get a better look here. Samurai is hoping that its prey will come to it. The only one chance minute they have left. right now. One minute left. Now one of the uh, one of the tenets of aggression is that you have to put your bot at at risk, Kyle. But uh, with this, this crab-walking samurai, it remains very dangerous. Anthony would really like to avoid yet another one of these pins and uh, that overhead saw. Yeah, but a little bit too much caution at this point. The judges are going to have a much easier time calling this one for samurai unless Anthony starts showing some really big aggression moving forward. The countdown has disappeared. So, uh, Control, if you could uh, count us out, how, uh, how many seconds do we have, uh, have left in this match? Nice job avoiding the saw. 30 seconds left in this match. Fifteen seconds left in this match. Oh, and 
that's the last image that uh, is going to go to the judges of a pin. Yep. Turn off your weapons. Good match. Whew. All right, this one's going to the judges, and this is not going to be a fun one. That was a difficult one. Uh, yeah. So, Samurai definitely got some really good shots in, even with their drive being down. But Blackbird definitely had the control of the fight in terms of being able to choose the timing of the engagements. But I would say, from Samurai being able to use its weapon, even with the drive being down, and still maintaining their heading towards the opponent, I would give it to Samurai. A unanimous decision for Samurai. It didn't look great for them at first, especially when Blackbird removed their wheel. But Ryan Beaver stayed patient, he had enough power in his remaining wheel to show control movement, and he got some very big saws in against Blackbird. If Blackbird's weapon had lasted the full three minutes, or even two minutes, the match would have turned out very different. Samurai continues its excellent run and advances to face Silent X, while Blackbird drops into the loser's bracket to face Red Hawk. Get ready. Loser's Bracket, Silk versus Gem So. Back to the Loser's Bracket for an elimination match. Silk is from builder Christian Cooper. It is a modular bot that is as dangerous as it is sleek. It's our 10th ranked bot in 2021, but this year's road has been shaky. After knocking out No Name in its first fight of the day, Silk was upset by new bot Head of Lettuce in a 66 second knockout. That was just the second time Silk has been knocked out this year, but they've been able to recover in the loser's bracket, winning decisions against DBSC3 and the powerful Shredded Bro. A win against Gemso would help continue riding the ship. Gemso is from local builder Aaron Tag from here in Norwalk, Connecticut, who attends many robotics events. They're having their best ever tournament so far, with knockouts against Fallout, Brimstone, and Wicked Wedge, all under 90 seconds. But those fights seem to have taken a toll, and they had to forfeit their match against Silent X, which put them in the loser's bracket. Silk is the toughest competition they've faced in the box today. Can they hold up? 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Fight! Robots fight! Oh, that is a, a lot of weapon power that we're hearing coming out of Silk. Silk is managing to consistently get under Gem So, and that is what is, is the, uh, the deciding factor here. Also, the weapon on, on Silk is just so much more powerful. Gem So losing a piece of its tape armor in the back there. Gem So losing its weapon! And that's tap a tap out. out. Gem So wow. cannot continue without its tape armor. They are done. Winner of that match is Silk. Gem So built by uh, builder Aaron Tag. And Aaron, thanks so much for, uh, for bringing the, uh, the bot to the competition today. Silk makes quick work of Gem So. This late in the tournament, tape armor is pretty common, but there wasn't enough tape to hold up against Silk's powerful spinner. This was Gemso's best ever Norwalk as they went 3 and 1 with all their fights decided by knockout. We can't wait to see more of them. We're going to spend the rest of this episode back up in the winner's bracket. We have three more fights to go through. Billy will face Jackrabbit, and Silent X will face Samurai. The winners of these fights will meet in the winner's semifinal. Win that match, and you're in the final. Get ready. Winner's bracket, Billy versus Jackrabbit. Two big contenders for the Golden Dumpster duke it out. Billy is from Colorado-based builder Jonathan Clark. We saw his 12-pound version of Billy, Bobby, make it to the finals of that bracket. And Billy is also having an excellent day with decisions against Spin to Win and Kelpie and knockouts of Valinor and number one ranked Polywog. A little bit of revenge against Hot Leaf Juice driver David Jin. Jack Rabbit is from Norwalk Institution Drew Davis, who has three bots in the all-time NHRL Top 50. He's entered two bots in the competition today. Bison made it to round eight of the loser's bracket, going six and two. But Jack Rabbit is threatening an even deeper run with knockouts against Steamroll and Uk Funt, and wins via decision against Black Adder and the dangerous Dread Hades. One of these bots is going to the winner's semifinal, and the other is going to the loser's bracket. Oh, this is going to be Jackrabbit's biggest test of the weekend. Look at those eyes! Those eyes, they're staring straight into my soul! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. Wow! Yeah, 
this is shocked Billy, or maybe it's just really, really angry Billy. I'm not sure. The bigger eyes, they, it just gives a whole new vibe to this thing. Now, Eight, Kyle, what am I seven, looking at with Jackrabbit? Six, what is that piece five, of red? Four, three, so that's two, New Wedge one, and then those, those five, uprights, the rabbit ears. Fight. A new wedge. And it seems like with these ears, the idea is it's that... It's double ears, yeah, to protect them from the mid-cutter bar of Billy. That's a very good design choice. We'll see how effective it is, but it's basically an extra layer of armor protection for their weapon. Because that's what we've been noticing, is that Billy can just take out these vertical weapons very easily just by knocking them off kilter, knocking them out of their brackets. I would say yes on uh, the weapon protection. However, I think that these might also be offensive bunny ears. With the hope of uh, Billy hitting one of those ears and breaking its bar. But with absolute bulletproof reliability for Billy's weapon today, I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, there's just not much to break on Billy's weapon. It just functions. There's nothing you can do about it. It looks like the right bunny ear, that red bunny ear from, uh, from Jackrabbit is gone. He's down to just three of those bunny ears where he started with four. And the drive is, is very sluggish from Drew Davis and Jackrabbit. Billy is very dangerous as an overhead bar. There's just no position where Billy is not dangerous as long as that weapon is running. Now what is going on with Billy? It looks like he might be break dancing right now. He's trying to get himself back over, and right now Jackrabbit, with its mobility issues, is not able to kind of run in and do any very uh, any attacks, which is how Billy normally gets himself back upright. They're about to make contact here. Here we go. You say that, and then it just doesn't happen. It's gonna happen, Kyle. I don't know. It's gonna happen right now. Hey, there's a little pop. That was anticlimactic. I really thought it was going to be bigger than that, Kyle. Should have been. Should have been. Wow, a little bit of weapon on weapon right there. Whoa, okay. Billy's gone full YOLO mode. Just says, all right, we're just going to go in an attack. And it sounds like uh, yeah, that weapon from Billy is just dragging on the floor. It would really like to flip itself over. Very difficult to do. Wow, Whoa, big hit. Nice all right. hit there from Jackrabbit, knocking Billy all the way back. And now Billy is back upright, not where Jackrabbit wants Billy to be. But Jackrabbit, what be, have you done? Billy seems to be having trouble with its left drive side, just pivoting on it. Wow. All right, this is the... These are uh, two very hobbled bots at this point. Billy's very successfully crab walking across the box, doing you faster than you would normally expect just because of their wide base, but... You're not going to believe it, but it's already been three minutes. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the match. And in those final seconds, that last bunny ear, that, that last red bunny ear came off of Jackrabbit. I think that Jackrabbit, Drew Davis, has employed the most effective anti-Billy strategy we have seen to date in this competition. Let's Absolutely. find out if it was enough. Even when the one side of the drive was dead on Billy, they were still attempting to make aggressive movements, whereas Jackrabbit was kind of holding back a bit more. A split decision for a very close match. This one could have easily gone either way. Jackrabbit was hobbled by getting its right wheel high centered for a good portion of the match, but at the same time, Billy was inverted with no power to its left wheel. Jackrabbit lost all his protective bunny ears. That may have been the difference here. So a razor-thin win for Billy sends it to the winner's semifinal. Jackrabbit must find a path to the final through the loser's bracket. Get ready. Winner's Bracket. Silent X versus Samurai. Samurai faces its biggest test yet in this tournament. Jameson goes Silent X. We already watched Samurai defeat Blackbird in a decision. Now it's up against a terrifying opponent. Silent X is from Jameson Go, captain of Sawblaze on BattleBots. We saw his 30-pound bot Megatron a few weeks ago. Now, in order to discuss Silent X, we have to first talk about its sibling, Silent Spring. Silent Spring is the all-time number one bot at NHRL, with a career record of, get this, 
34 wins, and 4 losses. That's almost a 900 winning percentage. Silent Spring also has a collection of golden dumpsters. It's been to 6 NHRL events and has won 5 of them. Five. And the one it didn't win was the 2020 Finals against the best three-pound Beatles in the world, and it still finished third. To put it another way, Silent Spring has won more Golden Dumpsters in its career than it has total career losses. Silent X's numbers are good, but they're not as eye-popping as Silent Spring. That's because Silent X, true to its name, is the experimental test bed for Silent Spring. When Jameson wants to try something new, he tests it in Silent X first. The most visible thing Jameson is testing in his bot right now are shuffling legs instead of wheels. It's working all right. Silent X has better mobility across the notorious butchered wood floor of the arena than most of its wheeled opponents. And because it has no wheels, Silent X gets to enjoy NHRL's weight bonus. It weighs 5 pounds instead of 3. So, how did Silent X get here? It knocked out Professor Hex and Honeycomb, and then won a decision against Shredded X. That's right, Shredded X is the experimental version of Shredded Bro. Silent X was scheduled to fight Gemso, but Gemso didn't have their bot ready in time and had to forfeit the match. Remember, the winner goes to the winner's semifinal to face Billy, and the loser drops to the loser's bracket. Can Samurai pull off an enormous upset? Jameson go with Silent X with his shuffle bot, his five pound shuffle bot, versus Samurai, which is an articulated saw bot that is a control, control bot. Kind of ironically, seven, Jameson is six, facing a Sawblaze-esque five, robot four, in Samurai. Three, winner's three, bracket round six. One. Fight, robots fight. Wow! Oh, that was a lot of power in that first contact. Uh, Silent X spins up so quickly. Wow, box rushing is just nearly impossible, especially with how fast Silent X is able to go on this walking mechanism that Jameson has created. Silent X would love to peel up that, uh, that front wedge of Samurai, break it so he can get underneath and start chewing away at those wheels, and he's done it! One of the wheels is gone on Samurai! We're seeing much better mobility, though, even with Samurai down one wheel than it was in this last match. Can Jameson go take off that second wheel? Wow. Jameson now is ripping that wedge up and into pieces. You can see both sides of it lifted into the air while that center is still down low. Not what you want with a wedge when you're trying to get control of your opponent. It's going to be very hard. Yeah. And there's the tap wow. out. Wow. Fast tap out from Samurai. Wow. The audience here is very, uh, very excited about that match. That was just a master class in why you should not fight Silent X. Now, if you're in the audience and you missed yesterday's fights, you might think to yourself, Silent X, Jameson Go, very interesting robot. Oh, it's got wheels, right? No, it doesn't have wheels. No it wheels. has legs. It has legs. This is a robot that has the mobility of wheels, but it has shuffle motion instead. Shuffle motion. There's not a wheel to be found on Silent X for this competition. A decisive win for Silent X knocking out Samurai in 56 seconds. It'll be Silent X versus Billy in the winner's semifinal. Samurai drops to the loser's bracket. Now, shuffling mechanisms in combat robots aren't new, but they're usually not this fast or powerful. Here's Chris chatting with Jameson about Silent X and its new legs. All right, so I'm here with uh, the mysterious and deadly Jameson Go and his mysterious and deadly bot, Silent X. And I know the internet has had a ton of questions about how this shuffler works. So I'd like to introduce Jameson and perhaps you could tell us a little bit about this bot. This is uh, Silent X, the latest version of it. And um, it seems to be doing pretty well today and yesterday. Uh, Jameson, can you, sh can you show us how the shuffle motion works? Uh, sure. I mean, the, at, at a high level, it's kind of like a heel-toe, heel-toe motion. There are four legs per side, or eight legs per side, and four per um, orientation. So it is invertible, as you saw in an earlier match. So I can run like this, or I can run like that, and the four legs per side uh, help achieve that. Now, like the critical things for like a shuffler, and mostly cam-based ones is that they have sort of like this rotary motion because of the because of the eccentric. But what you want to make sure is that you're getting more horizontal motion than vertical motion. You only need enough vertical motion to pick up the leg, but you really want a lot of travel there. 
So it's important to try to get as much of that uh, horizontal motion as possible, and that's what the uh, that's what's neat about this Struppler mechanism. So I have sort of like a an additional linkage that essentially gives it more throw when it's um, for each rotation of the cam. So if, take mic for a second. Now you've showed me that twist before. Can you can you get in on this? Take a look at that shuffler. Yeah, look at that. That is awesome. wild. That is beautiful. Wow. Now, Jameson, do you think that this is something that could scale to another weight class? Yeah, I, I do. I think it can actually scale. And let's be honest, the inspiration for this actually came from another builder's work in a higher weight class. So Andrew Peterson, who made, I forgot the name of the robot, but uh, I saw it in the 30 pounders, it completely transformed uh, at least my image of what a shuffler could be. So his work really inspired this design here. Uh, always try to improve on other people's work, you know, and so I made it a little bit simpler, but it captures the essence of what made it so beneficial. Now, one of the big things that I saw yesterday in the test box was that this version of Silent X was even faster than uh, the May version of Silent X. How did you achieve that extra speed and mobility? Well, for one, one thing, one of the uh, upgrades is switching from brush to brushless. The first version of it that we saw earlier this year was brushed. Uh, and it really just utilized the same electronics from the older Silent uh, Spring profiles. So now I'm running brushless in both Silent Spring and Silent X. I was able to prove out some of the issues that I had in, with my brushless system in Silent X earlier this year as well. Uh, and became did pretty well in the next time I published it into Silent Spring. Now I'm using that brushless setup again in Silent X, which is a faster motor by default. Uh, in addition, the differences between what I ran last time in Silent X uh, for the shufflers is an upgraded leg geometry, which gives me that additional horizontal throw right. per rotation. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jameson. We're going to give you time to uh, go back and check over your robot. You remain alive in the winner's bracket, so I'm sure that you'd like to take a look at everything inside of the bot and make sure that it's tip-top shape for your next fight. Thanks. Winner's semifinal, Silent X versus Billy. So here we are in the winner's semifinal. We just saw Silent X knock out Samurai to get here, and before that, we saw Billy win a very narrow split decision against Jackrabbit to get here. So what does winning this fight mean? First off, the winner advances to the final. But just as importantly, this is a double elimination tournament, and the winner of this match will reach the finals undefeated. That means if they lose in the final, we'll have a second finals match to decide the tournament winner. In other weight classes this tournament, we've seen Yahoo, Ramplan, and Hot Leaf Juice win the winner's semifinal and then win the first match of the finals. Before this tournament, over 65% of the bots that win the winner's semifinal also win the Golden Dumpster. That number is definitely going up with all these wins. So this is a critical match to win because it offers such a huge advantage. Will that advantage go to Silent X or will it go to Billy? So this is the semifinals for the winner's bracket. So the Jameson winner- Jameson Go has just casually pushed Silent X over and is starting upside down. Instead of an undercutter, it is now an overhead spinner. And let us see if this is enough Winner's bracket round seven, two undefeated Eight, robots. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Wow, just keep in mind, Silent X is a shuffler bot, even though it moves like a wheeled bot. Now Kyle, as you can see, Jameson Go is driving the back of Silent X into Billy. He's intent on breaking Billy's bar before he goes to work with that cutter. Wow! Billy's bar is absolutely no joke. Jameson Go has given thought to this. He would love to kill Billy's wheels and stay out of danger. And I'm sure that Billy would love to take a piece of those legs off of Silent X. Wow! Now don't be concerned, but I'm seeing a lot of blue in the box, Kyle. That's exactly why he flips his blade over so he can chop into the middle part of Billy's wheels by trying to the bring left it lower and side. lower. Yeah, that keep away stick that Billy uses to keep his blade from touching oh the ground is being chopped up. Jameson goes, done it. He's cut through the wheels, and now Billy's blade is dragging on the floor. 
Jameson go, come in and capitalize. Now's the time. And you can see he's going backwards into Billy's bar, waiting for that bar to slow down and stop before he spins that blade into Billy's wheels. Weapon and look, on weapon. Every time he hits Billy's wheels, he takes these massive chunks out of them. This is an excellent anti-Billy strategy implemented wow! by Jameson Go and Silent X. Wow. And look at look at Billy's wheels. They are hanging on by a thread. Pieces of Billy's wheels barely attached. Sometimes 90 seconds left. When he stacks the pieces just right, he's able to be the right height for the most part. Billy is just free floating now. Wow. Blade not able to spin because the keep away sticks are gone. The Everything mid. that holds Billy together is just coming apart here. And there we go. Jameson Go going full in with the weapon now. We are watching a death, Kyle. Just look at Billy. Slow but sure dismantling of Billy. Now all the important parts of Billy inside that body are exposed. 60 seconds left. Make it stop, Kyle. The point of your big wheeled robots is to keep all those important bits away. So that's not very heavily armored, what we see there on Billy's main body. I feel so bad for Billy and his little face. Don't feel bad for him. He's a sociopath. <laughs> wow, 30 seconds left. <laughs> this is a robot that has wheels in name only. Look at how many gouges are on the side of those wheels. And Jameson Go has figured out how to do the impossible. Now the weapon not spun up on Silent X. Not sure why. Not sure if he's trying to save it for the end. But we're getting down to the last... 15, 14, uh, 13 seconds of this match. Wow. Just tumbling Billy over and over. Yeah, Jameson's In still showing all the control. Incredible. Four, three, two, one. That's the end of this fight. All that right. is a this round of applause for Jameson to Go. the judges. That was an incredibly well-implemented strategy. Silent X rides a unanimous and decisive decision into the finals. Billy had no answers for Silent X's mobility or weapon. Silent X was able to feast on both of Billy's stabilizing sticks and its wheels, rendering Billy's potent weapon moot. Billy is such a tough robot to defeat, so this win is a strong sign for Silent X. Meanwhile, Billy drops to the loser semifinal. If it can win that match, it will return to face Silent X in the final. So who's gonna fight Billy and then Silent X? We'll answer that question next episode as we run through the loser's bracket. The following eight bots still have a shot. In the top part of the loser's bracket, we have Dread Hades and Polywog who will fight each other. Then we have Samurai who will fight the winner of that match. In the bottom part of the bracket, Blackbird and Redhawk still need to fight each other. The winner of that match fights Silk. Then we have Jackrabbit who will fight the winner of that match. Then the winner of the top part of the bracket will fight the winner of the bottom part of the bracket. The winner of that match advances to the loser semifinal, where Billy awaits. And after all that, the winner of the loser semifinal advances to the final to face Silent X. It's about as tough a path to the golden dumpster as we've ever had. Who will take it? Find out next week. Get ready.